In 2022, I released a new video promoting my 4 Elements Minecraft server nearly every day, a lot of which you probably haven't seen before. From my classic bending showcases to the awesome arena battles from this summer, I have neatly compiled every single video I made this year for your enjoyment. And I actually hit a secret message for you guys to find somewhere random in this video. Yes, I'm copying Cam Man. I don't know who would ever watch several hours of Minecraft server promotions, but if you do find it, let me know in the comments. Here's how to get started on my avatar themed Minecraft server. The first thing you want to do is choose your element. Yup, you get bending powers based around the four elements. Next, go to wilderness, randomly teleport, and start gathering your resources. I'd suggest building underground to stay low profile. Then, do slash set home to save your spawn point. It's about drive, it's about power! Free NBA young boy! Despite making up 13% of the player base, airbenders are responsible for over 52% of the lag. Follow for more fun facts. My avatar Minecraft server. What's the server IP? The IP is play.bendersmc.co, which is also my TikTok username. The IP is invalid. Actually, the IP is play.bendersmc.co. What's the IP or address for it? I again, the address is play.bendersmc.co. It's in literally every single video of mine. I need the IP address. Better scramble like an egg before you get folded like an omelet, nigga. Ooh, that brother's floating in the air. How could his hands do this? I hate that booty, that but I'm a total nation, I don't know. Every time they wanna lie about it, I'ma ask somebody cut it. Let's go. Well, I wish I could play longer, but... <laughs> He's pulling his cock out! The reason I get so much like top tier pussy is because of how I've set my life up, you know, and like the situations that I put myself in. And when you're at a party, and I learned this when I was in a fraternity, if you're at a party and you've got, you know, whatever. That was sus. Mommy Milkers. OJ Simpson. Social credit deducted. If you've joined my avatar-themed Minecraft server recently, you might have noticed our excessive lag, or our unbearably low TPS. I'm excited to announce that Bender's MC is now sponsored by Pebblehost, super awesome Minecraft dedicated hosting that's designed to fit any budget. Here's some before and after footage I took on the server. Mmm, much better as you can see. If you want to start a server, I recommend checking them out at the link in my bio. Here are my least favorite features of my avatar-themed Minecraft server. The server lagging so bad, it looks like a f***ing...
freaking Google slideshow. Well, that was until now. Bender's MC is now partnered with Pebblehost, and we just got some big time performance upgrades. I know a lot of you guys had trouble with the lag, and I wanted to show you guys that we do listen to your feedback. I just added some brand new bending moves to my avatar themed Minecraft server. You heard me right, each element just got an overhaul of 30 new abilities and specialized sub bendings. What I'm showing off is only a small fraction of what we just added. If you think this looks cool, hop on the server and check it out. Here are some brand new abilities that Earthbenders can use on my Minecraft server. This is Accretion. You press shift to summon a bunch of stones, and you click to throw them. The second one is called Dig. You get to swim through the earth, and it looks really funny. The last one is Lava Surge. It allows you to hurl magma blocks at your friends. Check out the new lightning bending I just added to my Minecraft server. This is Arc Spark. When you crouch, you shoot lightning from your fingertips just like Emperor Palpatine. Next, we have Electrify. You can use it to electrically charge metal blocks. Finally, Lightning Burst. Activate the move by holding crouch and release an uncontrollable ball of energy. Check out the new airbending abilities I just added to my Minecraft server. This is the suffocation ability. Use it to instantly take the air out of your enemy's lungs. Next, we have Sonic Blast. Crouch and release a very loud and unpleasant vortex of air. Finally, we have Meditate. Hold crouch for a few seconds and you will receive a bunch of potion effects. Check out the new plant bending abilities I added to my Minecraft server. This is Leaf Shield. Instantly grow a thick shield of oak leaves to protect you from danger. Next up, we have Razor Leaf. You summon this deadly green frisbee that you can throw in control. Finally, we have Grapple. If you're too poor to afford Spider-Man, Grapple is pretty much the same thing. Pro bending tournaments are returning to my Avatar Minecraft server. This weekend, we're hosting our first pro bending tournament after almost a year of hiatus. For those who have never seen The Legend of Korra, pro bending is a 3v3 style bending match where the objective is to gain as many zones as possible and knock your opponents over the edge. Our first tournament is this Saturday at 1pm EST. Join our Discord if you want to sign up. This is the most annoying bending type on my Minecraft server. Sound bending. Sound is a sub-element of air bending, and it allows you to manipulate acoustic waves. It's essentially useless in combat, but it's great for trolling your friends who play on full volume. Here are some new things that firebenders can do on my Minecraft server. Scorch your enemies with fire discs that you can throw and control in midair. You can use your firebending to fly too. It's helpful for traveling or getting away from bad guys. Launch a menacing heat ball with your fire serpent ability. That'll show players not to mess with you. Minecraft pro bending tournaments return to my server tomorrow at 1 p.m. EST. If you want to play, join our Discord. Pro bending only on play.bendersmc.co. Right. Oh, there he is. Oh, he, he went inside. All right, let, let's do the thing. Here's what you can do with sand bending on my Minecraft server. Control and manipulate sand like water and explode it in midair. Blind your enemies with a powerful sand blast. Turn the ground into sand and use your powers wherever you want. Here's what you can do with metal bending on my Minecraft server. Use metal nuggets to create a powerful close range shrapnel attack. Use your grapple ability to scale heights and run on walls. Finally, use your quick welding ability to fix those iron tools of yours. The Quickster! With the uncanny ability to run really quick! Wanna see me run to that mountain and back? You wanna see me do it again? Captain Magma! Get him angry and he's bound to erupt! Krakatawa! <laughs> and Miss Appear! Now you see her! No, you don't! Does this outfit make me look fat? 
the International Justice League of Super Acquaintances, a subsidiary of Viacom. Here's how to get started ah! on my avatar-themed Minecraft server. The first thing ah! is element. Yep, you get bending powers based around the four elements. Here are some things that you can do with combustion bending on my Minecraft server. First off, you can shoot missiles from your forehead, which is as cool as it is terrifying. Next, you can use this move called Explode, which if you couldn't tell by the name makes anything you're looking at, well, explode. Join the server if you want to check it out. Hey, Blitz here. I'm going to show you some satisfying bending moves on my avatar themed Minecraft server. First up, we have Shockwave, a crowd control move for earthbenders. Next, Next is Fire Vortex, a trustworthy defense mechanism for firebenders. Last, we got Crystal Prison. And trust me, being imprisoned in emeralds is as annoying as it is satisfying. I joined my avatar Minecraft server with my Oculus Quest and I did bending in VR. Ha. <laughs> raise the earth. Raise the earth. No, raise the earth. He's counter bending me. Oh, let's go. Check this out, Joker. I'm lightning bending. TikTok just sent me a trophy, and best part is, it showed up completely broken. Alright, now that I've taped my trophy back together, getting an award from TikTok is actually extremely rare. You'll notice it says Creator Genius on the trophy. I didn't actually get this for reaching like a follower milestone or anything. I actually got this by being part of an experimental monetization system called the Creative Challenge. There were only a handful of people in the experiment last year, and I participated pretty actively. I'm a motherfucking American, yeah, here. He's reading little names with nothing but root beer. Go down and have a ghost with the form of a Belichi. The party told me that my dear was made. This is the Avatar Minecrafter's guide to going outside. Step 1 Start by logging off my Avatar themed Minecraft server. Step 2 Take a shower, you filthy animal. Wait, what? Oh, sorry about that. Let's get some clothes on you. Maybe some khaki shorts a polo shirt, and let's style that hair. Much better. Looks like you're ready for step three, going outside. First, proceed out the front door with caution. Next, you'll see a large patch of green. Do not be afraid, it's just grass. Go touch it. Yeah, doesn't it feel nice? Congratulations, you've successfully made it outdoors. And, w w wait a second, is that your dad coming back with the milk? No way. We just started a brand new 1.18 survival world on my avatar minecraft server. Say goodbye to the old boring 1.17 terrain, 
and say hello to those epic caves and cliffs. Best part about the new world, it's more than twice as large as the old one was, with a radius of over 60,000 blocks. And don't worry, you won't lose any of your stuff. The old world will be open for another week, giving you plenty of time to transfer all your items to the new world. I tried to get rid of my autistic son by dumping him near the Delaware River. This is how you can fly using your earthbending powers on my Minecraft server. What you're going to want to do is bind the move Earth Smash using the command on screen. Then, just look at some earthbendable blocks, hold crouch until you see smoke appear, then release crouch, and hold crouch on the boulder you just made, and hop inside. This is how you can fly using your waterbending powers on my Minecraft server. What you're going to want to do is bind the move water spout using the command on screen. Then, just look at a water source, click it, then hold crouch, and you'll start flying in whatever direction you're looking. So she's smiling at me and telling me that she loves me, and I just look at her and I can't muster up anything. I feel nothing, and I feel empty, and I'm scared. Oh my god, I don't f This is how you can fly using your firebending powers on my Minecraft server. What you're going to want to do is bind the move jets, then just click to take off. So this is really useful for traveling and getting away from bad guys, but my favorite thing to do with jets is air striking my friends with combustion bending. What is the most useful element on my server for survival? Well, it's obviously water bending because you can heal yourself and catch fish on demand. But what about fire benders? They can cook food in their hands and instantly turn sticks into torches. Wait, I, I almost completely forgot about earth bending. They have that one move that lets them mine without using pickaxe durability. Oh, but wait, air benders? Actually, nobody cares. Let's get some things straight about my avatar Minecraft server. To choose your element, just type in slash warp choose and you'll be taken to a room with NPCs that you interact with to receive your bending. You can also change your element here whenever you want. I'd give all of them a try. Survival is the main game mode of the server and you can access the wilderness through spawn or at warzone. Then you can make a faction with your friends and survive together. What is the best element on my avatar Minecraft server? Well, it's actually all of them. There isn't an element that's better or worse than the rest of the bending types. It's all going to depend on how skilled you are at bending and the environment which you're bending in. For example, firebenders and earthbenders will have a hard time bending in the ocean, whereas waterbenders may have trouble bending in the desert. So today I decided to randomly teleport to people playing on my avatar Minecraft server. Looks like this guy spawned in the desert. That kind of sucks. Oh wait, no, he's using his earthbending. Oh, and he's flying away. This chick is working on her base. Oh, I think it's like a treehouse. Oh, this is pretty cool. I like this. This guy is mining with his earthbending abilities. Isn't that awesome? This guy is just chilling on this mountain here. Oh, I uh, think he just decided to end it all. Randomly teleporting to players on my avatar Minecraft server. These guys are having a fight with their waterbending right now. Hmm, I wonder who's gonna win. Oh, it's water. This guy spawned in a tundra. Good thing he chose firebending to keep himself warm. This guy's having an epic airbending 1v1 with a skeleton right now. Alright, looks like this dude's being chased by the guy in the armor. He's gonna use his firebending powers to get away. The biggest update to ever release on my avatar Minecraft server is dropping today at 1pm EST. Having been in development for more than 6 months now, the objective of this update is to make the server less confusing for new players and to improve overall game performance. Additionally, it serves as a quality of life update, polishing up features and renewing content across the entire server. One of the new features introduced to my avatar Minecraft server this week is server profiles. It looks quite fancy. You can choose yourself a background from like a dozen avatar themed pieces that our design team made. I really like the pro bending one. It also allows you to link your social media and equip cosmetics. Speaking of lobby, our build team completely redesigned it. It's going to make it easier for new players to learn how to play the server. One of the details I really like is being able to see the server logo when I press tab now. Oh, it looks very professional. These are some things you should know before joining my avatar Minecraft server. First, you do not need any mods to play. The bending is a plugin, so all you have to do is join and you'll automatically download the resource pack. Second, the server is compatible with Java and Bedrock, including mobile and console, and you can find a connection tutorial for those on our Discord. Third, the server is 1.18+, plus, so make sure your launchers are up to date. Randomly teleporting to players on my avatar Minecraft server. This guy is chilling in his base right now. I think he's practicing his air bending. He might be trying to learn how to use Sonic Blast. 
These guys are going insane with the water bending. This guy's using water spout, which allows you to like go up and down and stuff. This guy decided to hide his base underground. I think he just got started, and it looks like he's just going through his chest right now. Randomly teleporting to different players on my avatar Minecraft server. This guy's using his water bending powers to super swim. I can barely keep up with him. Oh, and he built a nice little base over here. This guy is trying to practice his lava bending abilities, which is a sub element of earth bending. Oh, I think he figured it out. These two dudes decided to team up, and it looks like they've been working on some beachfront real estate. Alright guys, tell me what sounds better. Being able to cook food in your fist and make sticks into torches with your fire bending, or infinite mining with earth bending. I forgot to mention, firebenders can also lightning bend, which is even cooler than it sounds. But is it cooler than lava bending? Hmm, I'm probably gonna have to pick water bending. Tell me what sounds more useful, being able to swim super fast and catch fish on demand with your water bending, or being immune to fall damage and the ability to become invisible with your air bending. But wait, water benders have the ability to plant bend and swing on vines, but is it cooler than being able to summon tornadoes? Hmm. I'm probably gonna have to go with earth bending. So I was flying around my avatar Minecraft server when I found these guys who were using their plant bending abilities to fly. It looks incredibly goofy, but it's really creative. It works by activating the move plant shield under your feet and just jumping. This guy finished off by activating leaf dome, which is going to allow him to safely return to the ground. So I was flying around my avatar Minecraft server when I found this guy holding off against some zombies with his fire bending. Using the moves fire shield and fire manipulation, he manages to get most of the zombies but he isn't looking super good on health. Looks like his friend is coming to try and help just in time, using his earth bending to send all hostile mobs flying. On my avatar Minecraft server, we replaced some of the special banner patterns with logos for the different nations from avatar. It's a small detail, but I really like how it allows players to show off their favorite element or tribe. This is how you can get blue fire bending on my avatar Minecraft server. Okay, just so that everybody knows, blue fire doesn't actually do any more damage than regular fire bending. It just sort of looks cool. All right, getting it is super easy. All you have to do is mount a motor. Here's how to become the best player on my avatar Minecraft server. Step one, start by using your water bending powers to build up your rare fish collection. Step two, invest your potential into sand bending. It's a sub element of earth bending. Step three, divorce your wife and become a full-time bending enthusiast, training over 25 hours a day. And most importantly, don't forget to join our Discord. I found these guys having a bending 1v1 on my avatar Minecraft server. Pay attention to the one using earth bending. The guy using air bending is trying to escape using his speed boost, but this dude was like, not today, and launched himself into the air and used his shockwave to finish him. I was on my avatar Minecraft server when I found this poor dude trying to figure out how to lava bend for the first time. You can see he almost gets it, <laughs> but then he just ends up burning himself into a crisp. Happens to the best of us. Here's a quick bending tutorial for my avatar Minecraft server. I'm going to start by showing you guys an easy earth bending technique. All you have to do is type in slash B bind earth shard, which is going to bind the move to one of nine slots that correspond to your inventory hotbar. To use the move, just press crouch on up to five earth bendable blocks and then just point and click in whichever direction you want to send the attack. Oh no, it looks like you broke your pickaxe and now you're lost in the caves. But wait, you can use your earth bending on my avatar Minecraft server to dig to freedom. Now you can take a breath of fresh air. Things you didn't know you could do on my avatar Minecraft server. Water benders can bend wherever they want as long as they have a water bottle in their inventory. Fire benders can use their lightning abilities to make supercharged creepers. Earth benders won't take fall damage as long as they land on an earth bendable surface. I found these two guys fighting on my avatar Minecraft server. One of them trapped the other guy in a ball of ice, but he's going to escape using his fire bending, but he gets frozen again but not for long. The waterbender ends up chasing him down the beach with his water arms. The firebender thinks he can escape, but then this guy uses his ice shards for a long range takedown. GG. Would you use dark or light spirit bending on my avatar Minecraft server? With light spirit bending, you can summon magical glowing sheep to protect you, but with dark spirit, you can summon spider minions. Dark spirit users can also create mini black holes to draw enemies towards them, but light spirit users can create life auras to heal their friends. 
but most importantly, I found this guy running from some zombies on my avatar Minecraft server. He was super low on health, but then he started using his earthbending combined with some Minecraft parkour skills to keep himself out of danger. Great play and nice job. Did you know that earthbenders could lava bend on my avatar Minecraft server? Since lava is just molten stone, it makes sense that lava bending is a sub-element of earthbending and not fire. Lava bending can deal an incredible amount of damage, you can even make these epic lava discs and cut through walls with them. But make sure you don't burn yourself in the process. Things you didn't know you could do on my avatar Minecraft server. If you lightning bend the water source, just like in real life, it will electrocute all enemies inside of it. With earthbending, you can extract metal ores without using a pickaxe. Waterbenders can use their wake fishing ability to summon fresh seafood on demand. These are the coolest firebending combos you can use on my avatar Minecraft server. Firewheel is a long range attack which can be performed by using fire shield and blaze. The fire spin combo can be super effective for crowd control. And jet blaze allows you to fly around. Join the server and check them out for yourself. These are the coolest waterbending combos you can use on my avatar Minecraft server. Ice Drill is an epic waterbending ability that lets you erect giant ice spikes. Water Gimbal lets you create two powerful rings of water that can be used in self-defense. With Shatter, you make a giant ice sphere which you can detonate to send ice shards in all directions. Random facts you didn't know about my avatar Minecraft server. Firebenders deal more damage in the daytime, whereas waterbenders inflict more damage at night. Earthbending has three different sub-elements, sand, metal, and lava. You can connect to the server on Java and Bedrock, and if you need help connecting, join our Discord. Did you know you could plant bend on my avatar Minecraft server? If you're a waterbender, you can activate plant armor, which is a vine suit that mitigates falling and drowning damage. Plant armor also gives you access to nine different bending abilities. It's basically the Swiss army knife of bending moves. Your plant attacks even change color according to what biome you're bending in. Did you know that firebenders could lightning bend on my avatar Minecraft? Minecraft server. Just like Emperor Palpatine, you can shoot lightning from your fingertips. You can also electrify conductive surfaces like metals and water. My personal favorite, you can charge up and detonate a huge ball of energy. Here's how you can fly with your airbending on my avatar Minecraft server. First trick is easy. Find the move air blast, hold crouch, and just spam click in whichever direction you want to travel. You can also use air spout, which lets you levitate, similar to creative mode flying. It can be used as scaffolding for building and mining. Did you know earthbenders could sandbend on my avatar Minecraft server? You can summon a mini sandstorm using your dust devil's ability. It's great for crowd control. Not only can you easily fend off against enemies with your sand bending, you also give them the blindness effect. You can bend every color of concrete powder which isn't super useful, but it's cool nonetheless. If you're the builder in your friend group, you'll definitely want to use air bending on my avatar Minecraft server. You can use your air spout for free scaffolding and you're immune to fall damage. But if you're the miner of the group, you'd much prefer earth bending because you can mine without using pickaxe durability and you have lava bending to fight off any goons you find. And for the hunter of the group, I'd recommend either water or fire bending. With water bending, you can catch fish on demand, but with your fire bending, you can instantly cook those fish in your fist. This is the fastest way to travel on my avatar Minecraft server. So if you're a water bender, go ahead and pop on a pair of Depth Strider 3 boots. Now you'll be able to super swim at mock speeds. These are the dumbest ways to die on my avatar Minecraft server. Boy, I sure do hate it when my fire bending spontaneously combusts on me. If you use water bending, then drowning is a little ironic. Earthbenders think that tunneling straight down is the best way to find diamonds, but then they end up losing their entire inventory. Bruh, somebody asked me today, Fortnite or Call of Duty? Fortnite or Call of Duty? Mmm, I think I'ma take- Among Us! <laughs> Here are the pros and cons of each bending type on my avatar Minecraft server. Water bending, great for traveling, even better as an offensive fighting style. Cons, you'll always need a water source nearby. Fire bending, great for survival and can be used practically anywhere. Cons, you will still take fall damage. Earth bending, excellent for mining and gathering materials. Cons, it is also the most dangerous bending, so be careful. 
Airbending, great for building and defensive fighting. Cons, you might have trouble getting some bitches. This is what it feels like to bend on my avatar Minecraft server. So today I realized waterbenders could make these ice shields with their surge ability on my avatar Minecraft server, and that got me thinking. You could probably make one of those Roman testudo formations with this move. So that's exactly what we did. As long as you have one or more friends who also waterbend, then you can combine your ice shields to basically plow through your enemies while remaining virtually untouchable. You guys like the Roman testudo formation I made yesterday with waterbending on my avatar Minecraft server? I decided to try it again, but with three more people to make a giant moving ice ball. It took a lot of coordination, but it's definitely indestructible. Just like that chick Tylee and Avatar, you can chi block on my Minecraft server. Chi blocking is actually a close range melee counter bending type that lets the user stun, blind, and disable other players' elemental abilities. It's basically normal Minecraft PvP on fucking steroids. You can throw daggers, jump hundreds of feet in the air, and you even got this handy camouflage ability that lets you become invisible while crouching in tall grass. More things you didn't know you could do on my Avatar Minecraft server. Using the move Fire Blast, punch the bottom half of your furnace to get free fuel. Airbenders have access to sound bending. You can use this move called Vocal Mimicry to mimic any sound in Minecraft. Waterbenders can use cactuses as a water source block. This is an adult waterbender, currently in his natural habitat, my avatar Minecraft server. About 300 meters southwest, it looks to be a lone firebender, clearly lost and confused. Unfortunately for him, it's currently breakfast time for waterbenders. Let's see what's gonna happen to this fella. You can see, he tries to defend himself, but because of the environment, he's ultimately no match for the waterbender. You're just minding your own business on my avatar Minecraft server, when suddenly you get ambushed by a firebender. You quickly raise an earth wall to block his incoming attacks. Then, you use your earth bending to tunnel underground and get behind your enemy. Just as you're about to surprise attack him with your earth shards, he blocks them with a wall of fire. Then, he uses his jets ability to make a quick getaway. He may have lost, but at least he lives to fight another day. You're just doing some farming on my avatar Minecraft server, when all of the sudden, you get knocked to your feet by an airbender. Using the water from your farm, you put up an ice shield to block his next attack. He attempts to run away, but you activate your water arms and pull him back towards you. He forces you back with his air shield and then begins to suffocate you. Luckily, you manage to freeze him just seconds before you would have taken your final breath. You've just found some diamonds on my avatar Minecraft server when your friends start having second thoughts about sharing the loot with you. But what they don't know is that you're a master earthbender. You quickly push them back with your mud surge ability. They try to retaliate, but you've got a trick up your sleeve. You can lava bend. So you convert the ground into molten earth. That'll teach him not to mess with you. You were taking a walk on my avatar Minecraft server when out of nowhere, a group of rogue sandbenders blind you and then kidnap your dog. Feeling your inner Keanu Reeves, you use your airbending to quickly take off after your enemies. You catch up, but you realize you're outnumbered, fearing the worst to come. Suddenly, your dog breaks free and spontaneously develops master waterbending skills and saves you at the very last second. This is what firebending looks like while using an RTX shader pack on my avatar Minecraft server. Dude, guys, check it out. It's Otis from Back to the Barnyard. Oh, actually, never mind. I melted his face off. I wonder what's up with this guy. Oh, dear. You know, he probably had shit trades. I wouldn't worry about it. Nathan Troy Adams. Buy a box of thin mints? Sure, I'll take two boxes. How about two million? No, one million. Okay. I want so, you're cooking yourself breakfast on my avatar Minecraft server, when suddenly you get trapped by an earthbender. You use your fire jet ability to fly out, but then the earthbender proceeds to burrow underground to get to your position. Sensing the danger beneath you, you activate your blaze ability to protect yourself with a perimeter of flames. Your enemy finally surfaces, only to be met with the unpleasant sight of your fire disc straight to the face. Guys, I want to show you how easy it is to find diamonds with your earth bending on my avatar Minecraft server. I'm with my friend here who's going to be demonstrating his earth abilities today. Look, only a few blocks in and he's already found some diamonds to mine. Let's see what else we can find.
<laughs> Have you ever seen those advertisements for an avatar Minecraft server on your For You page? Why are they so fucking annoying? Do people actually join these servers? And who the hell is making them? Well, I am. You may know me as Blitz, but my real name is Kai. I'm a 19 year old college student and I'm the one behind the Avatar Minecraft server. People sometimes hate on me, but I don't let them hold me back because there are people who genuinely enjoy my server and for them, I'll be the best leader I can be. Not everybody's gonna wanna play Avatar Minecraft and honestly, that's completely fine. We don't think we're the best server ever and trust me when I say we know we aren't perfect, but we do hope you'll make some awesome memories because that's what Minecraft is really all about. Thanks. So I think ice bending on my avatar Minecraft server might be a little too powerful. So this guy is using the move Ice Spike, which can either be performed by crouching or punching. It's a high damaging move that can be used for crowd control or individual targets. Just make sure you're near a frozen body of water and you can ice spike as you please. Did you know that firebenders could lightning bend on my avatar Minecraft server? Just like Emperor Palpatine, you can shoot lightning from your fingertips. You can also electrify conductive surfaces like metals and water. My personal favorite, you can charge up and detonate a huge ball of energy. Roxy, I know I was trolling last time, but I really want to reveal this secret to you, but you have to promise not to break up with me. Okay, I promise I won't break up with you, but just tell me, you dumb bitch. Okay, I'm turning off my voice changer. Wait, what? Yo, what up, shouty? You still trying to smash? Hell yeah, bro, what the fuck? You sound hot as shit. I was legit pranking Wait, you. I'm not a guy, I'm a girl. No, what the fuck bro. is wrong with you? Holy oh. shit, I just hit a click! How to play my avatar Minecraft server. First, connect to the server using the IP address address. Then you'll enter lobby where you'll pick your preferred game mode, classic survival or faction survival. Once you decide, it's time to choose your element, which you can do at spawn by accessing a GUI or by interacting with the NPCs. Since you can't use bending attacks at spawn, you'll have to randomly teleport into the wild to start your journey. From there, you can claim some land and start building yourself a base. Join our discord if you need help connecting. Here are some things you should do on my avatar Minecraft server. Build a sand castle using your earth bending. Hang 10 and surf some tidal waves with your water bending. Is your air conditioning broken? No problem, just air bend. Or you could just like actually go outside, I don't know. Here are a few building hacks you can do with your bending on my avatar Minecraft server. If you want to live discreetly, just choose earth bending. You can make a hobbit hole and make a secret collapsible entrance. Or you can make these water bending elevators that allow you to go up to 16 blocks high. You can also put ice on your floors to give all of your water bending friends a helpful speed boost. Join our discord if you need help connecting to the server. Can three firebenders defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? 3, 2, 1, go. They seem to put up a pretty good fight at first, then they kind of start dropping like flies. The last guy tries running and using some defensive moves, but he's got nothing on that sonic boom. Tell me what element we should try next. Can three earthbenders defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? Three, two, one, go. My hopes were pretty high, especially because of all the earth sub-elements, but they still ate shit. The last guy even tried lava bending, but because the warden is immune to lava damage, it only slowed him down. He's also going to try and block the sonic blast with his earth walls, but it has little to no effect. Tell me what elements we should try next. Can three waterbenders defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? Three, two, one, go! Alright, the immediate strategy these guys take is freezing the warden to slow him down, and using knockback moves to keep him away. But the plan starts to backfire on them. Watch this trilobite brain accidentally throw his friend into the warden. But you gotta love karma because he gets wrecked almost instantly. Tell me what element we should try next. Can three airbenders defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? Three, two, one, go. A lot of you guys thought air would be a good element because of its knockback abilities, which does seem to give them the upper hand at first, but they're not dealing enough damage. So far, they've managed to stay alive longer than any of the other teams, but inevitably, they start getting picked off one by one until there were none left. Tell me what element we should try next. Can all four bending types defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? Three, two, one, go. This has been the most popular request by far, and it's finally time to see who will win. Each element has its own unique strength, and therefore combining all of them together should make an unstoppable team. 
so, after a few minutes of intense bending and concentrating, they still get shit on. This might be impossible, guys. Tell me what I should do in the comments. Can 16 elemental benders, 4 players from each element, defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? 3, 2, 1, go. Alright, so I sped up the fight because I wanted to show you guys just how tough the warden really is. You'd think 16 players could annihilate him in seconds, right? But he ended up surviving for almost 4 minutes. Do you think Mojang made him too strong? Let me know in the comments. In my last video, the Warden boss took on 16 players wielding one of the four elements on my Avatar Minecraft server. I put together the highlights of the battle since a lot of you guys wanted to see more than just the time lapse I included. If this looks like fun, you can join my server using the IP at the top of the screen or by visiting our Discord server using the link in my bio. Can 8 lightning benders defeat the new warden on my avatar minecraft server? 3, 2, 1, go. For those who don't already know, lightning is a sub-element of firebending. It's an advanced technique generally used by more skilled users. I actually replace the floor with iron blocks because it's conductive, so they can electrify the floor to deal more damage. Anyways, soon after the warden hits this nasty triple kill, the last remaining firebender tries to put up a 1v1, but gets bonked a little too hard by the warden. Tell me what we should try next. Can 8 combustion benders? defeat the new warden on my avatar minecraft server three two one go combustion bending is a sub element of fire bending according to lore very few people are born with this ability making it exceptionally rare shooting missiles out of your forehead might look cool but it's arguably the most dangerous bending because of how easy it is to accidentally explode yourself which may or may not have made it easier for the warden to absolutely eviscerate all eight of them tell me what we should try next can eight bloodbenders defeat the new warden on my avatar minecraft server three two one go bloodbending is a sub element of waterbending it's an extremely rare technique that essentially lets you use the force on anything living they're also able to life steal health points from their enemies in order to heal themselves these guys put together a simple but effective strategy that involved throwing the warden dozens of blocks up into the air for several minutes until he eventually died from fall damage Tell me what bending we should try next. I took 16 players, split them into four teams, one for each element on my avatar Minecraft server, watch them face off in my arena in three, two, one, go. Let's see which bending is really the strongest. I call this bending royale. All four elements go in, four players on each team, and only one will come out. I gave them all a glow effect so that it's easier for you guys to see the teams and what's going on. Because I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking for a rematch, let me know what you want to see in the arena next. And airbending wins. Can 8 metal benders defeat the new warden on my avatar minecraft server? 3, 2, 1, go. Metal bending is a sub element of earth bending. According to lore, it's one of the most powerful sub bending types, but also one of the most difficult to learn. These guys made good use of the iron blocks found in the pavement, as well as using their grappling abilities to outmaneuver the warden. The fight was intense and lasted several minutes. They actually ended up draining 90% of the warden's health before they fumbled the bag at the very last second. Tell me what bending we should try next. Can eight plant benders defeat the new warden on my avatar minecraft server three two one go plant bending is a sub element of water bending which if you didn't know is possible because plants are mostly made of water these guys use the leaves around them to put on these vine suits which gives them minimal damage protection and access to a whole bunch of cool moves they worked together and displayed excellent teamwork but they didn't end up dealing enough damage good thing wardens don't live in swamps Tell me what bending we should try next. Can eight sandbenders defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? Three, two, one, go. So at the beginning of the fight, the warden immediately singled out this player for some reason and then chased him until he was eliminated. Sandbending is actually a sub element of earth bending. A sandbender's biggest advantage is their ability to inflict blindness, but the warden is already blind, so I guess you can throw that out the window. They survived a long time, lots of teamwork, but as you probably guessed it, they got shit on. Tell me what bending we should try next. Can eight lava benders defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? Three, two, one, go. Lava is a sub-element of earth bending and not fire bending because lava is technically molten earth. What you may not have known is that the warden is actually immune to lava damage. You'll notice he takes some projectile and some magic damage from the bending, but otherwise these guys essentially prolonged their elimination as long as possible and still got shit on. What bending should we try next?
Can Age Icebenders defeat the new Warden on my Avatar Minecraft server? 3, 2, 1, go. If it couldn't be more obvious, icebending is a sub-element of waterbending. It's a special technique which allows one to instantly convert water into ice and vice versa. These guys put together some of the most effective teamwork I have yet to see in this series. They used their freezing properties to slow down the Warden's advance, and they subdued his sonic shrieks. The battle lasted quite a few minutes, but they came prepared with a master strategy that helped them secure the victory. Tell me what bending we should try next. Can eight light spirit benders defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? Three, two, one, go. For those who didn't know, there are two types of spirit bending, light and dark, and both are incredibly rare. Today, we'll be talking about light spirit. Light spirit bending lets the user project powerful spirit beams, summon magical spirit sheep, and heal your friends. The fight was really fun to watch, they worked really well together, especially using their abilities to heal each other. Watch how they practically dissolve the warden with their light beams. Incredible. Tell me what bending we should try next. Can 8 dark spirit benders defeat the new warden on my avatar Minecraft server? 3, 2, 1, go. Yesterday I showed off light spirit benders versus the warden, and you guys really wanted to see what dark spirit bending looked like. Dark spirit is actually very similar to light, you can project dark beams at your enemies, heal yourself, and trap entities in a temporary black hole. So the fight didn't last long, in fact they deleted the warden within a minute. And that brings me to an even more important question. What's more powerful, dark or light spirit bending? Also, tell me what bending I should try next. Who will win, 8 dark spirit benders or 8 light spirit benders on my avatar Minecraft server? 3, 2, 1, go. Since we couldn't come to a conclusion on what the best spirit bending is, I decided to have them face off against each other in this incredible fight. The Dark Spirit Bender started off strong, taking out a bunch of the Light Spirit users, but don't celebrate too early, they ended up getting too spread out and became easy targets. The Light Spirit Benders worked together and made a massive comeback and sealed the victory. Tell me what bendings you want to see next. Watch 8 Lava Benders take on 8 Ice Benders on my Avatar Minecraft server. And let's go! These are two of the most popular and powerful sub-elements in the game. Ice Bending is a sub-element of Water, and Lava Bending is a sub-element of Earth Bending. Lava and Ice are practically polar opposites when when it comes to bending. One's really hot, one's super cold, I think you get the idea. The battle was super close. Near the end, the last lava bender almost manages a 3v1 against the remaining ice benders, but is tragically defeated. Tell me what bendings you want to see next. Can one earth bender defeat 500 zombies on my avatar Minecraft server? This guy is outnumbered 500 to 1, but he's not intimidated by those odds because he's a master earth bender. Watch how he uses his lava bending combined with his shockwave ability to take out a bunch of zombies and put distance between himself and the rest of the horde. This is why earthbending might just be the best element for crowd control. Additionally, the zombies are also taking significant fall damage. Honestly, this looks pretty easy, guys. What do you think? Can one firebender defeat 500 zombies on my avatar Minecraft server? Okay, that's a lot of zombies, but this guy isn't just some noob. He's an extremely experienced firebender, and he's got a ton of tricks up his sleeve. Watch how he uses his wall of fire to constrict their movement, and then he gets up close and personal with his fire breath to deal some extra damage. He made excellent use of his fire jet's ability, managing to keep enough distance not to get killed, while still having effective range for his bending. This looked almost too easy, guys. What do you think? Can one waterbender defeat 500 zombies on my avatar Minecraft server? The odds are pretty intimidating for this guy, and considering waterbending is probably one of the worst elements for crowd control, there isn't a super effective way to take out all those zombies. But that's not gonna stop him. He uses his torrent skill to create a deadly perimeter around his character, and when the horde gets too close, he brushes them aside with a tidal wave. This battle was unnecessarily long. He dealt the damage, just not quick enough. But after around three minutes, the waterbender finally prevailed. Can one airbender defeat 500 zombies on my avatar Minecraft server? Airbending has a reputation as being one of the weakest elements in the game, but this guy is definitely going to convince you otherwise. He just crouched to activate his tornado and then sat back and enjoyed the show. Not only was this the most efficient method we've seen so far, it was also the most hilarious. That looked way too easy, guys. What bending should we try next? You guys wanted to see water and earth bending versus air and fire bending on my avatar Minecraft server. There are 16 people in this arena, so 8 people per team, 4 people per element. I feel like the reason this was such a popular request was that air and fire bending attacks are mostly particle effects, while earth and water are falling blocks. So not only do these elements look different, but each of them demand a different playstyle and environment. But which one is really stronger? Looks like air and fire win. 
what bending should we try next? Can one earthbender defeat 50 iron golems on my avatar Minecraft server? First, he's going to make some space between him and the enemies using his shockwave ability. Also, remember guys, all it takes is one hit from an iron golem and you'll lose your entire inventory. So he better be careful. Then he builds himself a little tower, just tall enough so that the golems can't reach him. Then he activates his lava disc. Now he's dealing constant damage without any risk of being hit. Admittedly, it's a pretty cheap method, but also very creative. What kind of bending do you guys want to see next? Can one firebender defeat 50 iron golems on my avatar Minecraft server? Right off the bat, this guy is going to bunch up the horde and use his blaze ability to deal some of that AoE damage. These guys are really tanky, so that fire tick is definitely coming in handy. He used his jets ability to maintain a good distance from the golems, and he also made good use of his wall of fire, using it to constrict their movement. This firebender put on an incredible performance like none other. The only flaw was how long the battle took, but a victory is a victory. Can one waterbender defeat 50 iron golems on my avatar Minecraft server? It's about to get wet and wild, so make sure you stay beyond the splash zone. He immediately activates his octopus form, which is a defensive waterbending technique that can deflect entities and protect you from all 360 degrees. Watch how he gets surrounded by enemies on all four sides, but his defenses still don't give up. This guy employed an interesting strategy, using a defensive move offensively. As you can see, it ended up working out quite well for this guy. What bending should we try next? Can one airbender defeat 50 iron golems on my avatar Minecraft server? In my last airbending video, the player used his tornado ability to take out most of his enemies using fall damage. But since iron golems are immune to fall damage, I brought in one of my best airbenders to show you how the pros do it. While airbending isn't super famous for its attack damage, it does have a reputation for its excellent movement and defensive capabilities. It took this dude a whopping 5 minutes to go through these golems, mostly relying on his movement abilities and his AoE damage to get the job done. Can one earthbender defeat the wither on my avatar Minecraft server? First thing the player does is assimilate a powerful molten lava disc to start dealing some continuous damage. And remember guys, just because the wither has 3 brains doesn't mean it's actually going to use them. <laughs> He combines those lava skills with some incredible footwork, dodging most of the Wither's attacks, and ends up taking the dub. What bending should we try next? These are a few ways you can use blood bending on my avatar Minecraft server. If you find a creeper in a skeleton, you can actually pick up that creeper with your blood bending and use it as a meat shield to get yourself some quick music discs. Creepers will literally become your best friend. If you're getting chased by a player and spot a creeper, just pick that thing up and throw it at your enemy. It's really funny and they'll never expect it. Can one lightning bender defeat 500 zombies on my my avatar Minecraft server. Her request, I replaced the floor with iron so that this guy can electrify it to slow down some of those zombies. Lightning is actually a sub-element of fire bending, and according to lore, it's also one of the most powerful bending techniques. Lightning is one of the most effective crowd control methods in the game because of its abnormally high AoE damage. The battle was legendary, it was super entertaining to watch this guy bait out these zombies and then eviscerate them with a huge storm of lightning the second they got within reach. Can the avatar, master of all four elements, defeat the new war? on my avatar minecraft server first thing this guy is going to do is activate his element sphere it offers minimal protection and a helpful speed boost what the f can one firebender defeat 200 sea turtles on my avatar minecraft server watch how he jumps straight in there to start dealing area damage these guys are pretty tanky and they get spread out easily so he has to eliminate them as fast as possible as he's working on the horde he starts popping some really cool fire combos i guess to show off his skill level or something not gonna lie this looked pretty easy guys what should we try next can one airbender defeat 10 withers on my avatar minecraft server all right ladies and gentlemen this is gonna be a tricky one airbending may makes you travel super fast, and luckily for this dude, he can travel faster than these withers can aim. The battle went on forever, and this guy had to use every square inch of the arena to keep the advantage. He made great use of his Gale Gust ability, allowing him to damage multiple mobs at once. Super cool. With how good these guys are getting, it was no surprise to see him absolutely solo all 10 of those withers. What should we try next? Can one waterbender defeat 300 blazes on my avatar Minecraft server? You might be expecting this guy to whip out his octopus form, but he's got a need for speed. He quickly activates his water spout ability and starts flying around the arena while dodging hundreds of fireballs. If you've played Minecraft for long enough, you'd know blazes take a bunch of damage if submerged in water, and that's essentially what he's relying on here to take out the horde. After a few more minutes of furiously water bending, he finally manages a victory. What should we try next? Can one earthbender defeat 500 angry bees on my avatar Minecraft server? Since earth blocks are almost exclusively found on the ground, it's safe to assume that earthbending isn't the 
best choice for air defense. This guy has to keep the bees as close to the ground as possible, so he can do area damage with his shockwave ability. Bees move pretty fast, so he does his best to constrict their movement with his earth walls, and he makes excellent use of his lava disc ability, slashing it back and forth inside the crowd. After only a few minutes, he conquers the swarm. What should we try next? Can one firebender defeat 500 spiders on my avatar Minecraft server? First thing this guy is going to do is charge up and release his lightning burst ability right in the middle of all those spiders. He most definitely took out at least 200 of those guys. Before getting surrounded, he takes off using his fire jet and then begins circling the arena. He does that until he's condensed the horde enough to unleash another lightning burst. What made this battle extra challenging was the spider's size and speed advantage, but nothing's too tough for a master firebender. Can one airbender defeat 100 evokers on my avatar Minecraft server? If you didn't know, evokers are summoners, meaning they can summon these tiny flying abominations called a vex. This guy is in a real pickle. He has to take out 100 targets on the ground while also having his personal airspace contested. He cannot stop moving because if he does, he'll get bit by those giant fangs you see. Eventually, he does end up taking out all the evokers on the ground, but their flying minions finish him off. Who do you guys think won? And what should we try next? On July 28th, 2020, after developing the server with my friend for a month, Bender's MC was officially launched alongside my TikTok account. To our surprise, our TikTok actually blew up, and now our tiny avatar server was being swarmed with thousands of players excited to master the four elements. The immediate success overwhelmed us, and eventually we got into a disagreement, which ended with the destruction of our server. Later, we decided that parting ways was best for both of us. A day later, eager to get my server back on track, I enlisted the help of a few volunteers and a personal friend of mine and boy did it make a difference. Four or five months later, the project was running brilliantly. The community was super active and engaged. We even started holding regular bending tournaments and events to keep the players busy. Everything was going well. It looked like we were finally gonna get our big break. But on January 1st, 2021, the server was sabotaged. The server had been sabotaged. To my astonishment, the perpetrator was one of my best friends, someone who I often looked up to when I was younger. He actually helped me rebuild my server after the last incident, and to thank him, I even let him in on 50% of the profits we were making. We weren't exactly swimming in it, but we were still doing pretty well for ourselves. It didn't make any sense to me when he suddenly decided to leave our company and destroy everything we ever made. According to his friends, he got very jealous of how successful our TikTok account was. Yes. He was mad about those stupid bending videos I make, but more specifically, he didn't like the Blitz persona. I had engineered Blitz as a way to reach our audience better and make our content more consumable. We got equal success out of it. At this point, I didn't really know if I was being trolled or if this guy was just like a huge sociopath, but whatever he did, he also did to himself. For the first time in my career, I hit rock bottom. For the first time in my career, I hit rock bottom. How was I gonna tell my thousands of players that their favorite Minecraft server had been sabotaged? I had failed one of the most fundamental parts of my job, to protect the server at all costs. I decided to bring my story to social media, and to my surprise, I received overwhelming support and attention from over a million people. Apparently these guys thought deleting a Minecraft server was pretty lame, and a bunch of them volunteered to come and help us in our time of need. The team stepped up, we even delegated our first staff team manager and a creative director. Within two weeks, the server was back up and fully operational. Despite being completely screwed multiple times, I had managed to double the size of the server in only a few weeks. I started to feel invincible. It looked like every time something terrible happened to the place, we just became stronger. The server had maxed out player slots 24-7, we even added Bedrock Crossplay so everybody could enjoy the server. But there were way more people wanting to play on the server now than they were actually capable of handling. This is when I became a victim of my own success. The server was now gaining overwhelming attention on social media. Behind the scenes, we had to deal with an unwarranted amount of technical flaws, many of which we didn't even know how to fix. I picture Bender's MC as a machine, a machine completely fueled by my stupid bending videos. I started releasing new bending videos showing off the server every day. Consistency was most important to sustain our success. I had actually marketed the server so well that people weren't able to enjoy it due to the sheer volume of traffic that we were receiving. People would 
would watch my videos, get really excited to use some of those epic bending powers, join the server, and instead witness what was essentially a glorified Google slideshow. It made me and my work look like a joke. This issue persisted for months, and our sponsor only had a limited amount of hardware, so getting server upgrades took an unnecessary amount of time. I couldn't sit there and watch my players suffer, and I wasn't thrilled about having to wait weeks on end to get access to more reliable servers. I knew that if I wanted to save my community, I was going to have to start making some tough decisions. My Avatar Minecraft server started receiving recognition from millions of people all around the world, but my servers weren't reliable enough to handle the attention or sustain the success we were getting. I decided that instead of running my project on one large server, I would split up the workload using several large servers bridged together. My sponsor at the time couldn't keep up with my requests, so we partnered up with the guys over at Pebblehost instead. I got much easier access to hardware upgrades and around-the-clock customer support. I broke up my staff team into four different departments. Moderation, development, building, and designing. Since receiving so much attention, we now had volunteer applications out the door, and the new recruits just kept coming. I started this project with no previous experience running Minecraft servers, and it grew into an opportunity larger than I could have ever imagined. Over the last two years, I've learned a lot, not just about Minecraft servers, but about people and what it means to be the leader of a community. To sum up everything I've learned would be impossible, but if you're looking to run your own Minecraft server, Server, let me share some advice with you. Actually go and spend time with your players. Log on your server, be a part of your project, whatever. A lot of owners tend to hold themselves so high above their community that they become completely disconnected from their player base. You're not a celebrity, you own a Minecraft server. The least you could do is interact with the people who enjoy it. My Minecraft server definitely isn't perfect, and I'm by no means the world's best server owner, but I'll still wake up every day and try my hardest to make our players happy. Can one airbender yeah. defeat 500 angry bees uh, on my avatar yeah. Minecraft server? Set my balls on fire, I don't feel like shaving. So delicate, I can't be razor blading. Like a baby's butt, no hair remaining. Might be burnt, but I feel amazing. Set and the air nomads fire, take another W. Like what should we so try next? Kit, Today me and my friend were screwing around on the avatar Minecraft server. We started spawning a bunch of giant slimes because we wanted to see if we could blood bend them. Short answer, we could, and it looks hilarious. You can even do it with magma blocks. Like, imagine you're just chilling, and then like, bam, someone throws a giant fucking slime at you. Probably won't happen to you, but the chances are never zero. I was flying around my avatar Minecraft server when I found this familiar looking structure. Upon closer inspection, I realized it was actually an Agni Kai arena, or just a fancy platform where you fight with your bending. I found the guy who built it and I challenged him to a fire bending 1v1. I told him that if he could beat me in a 1v1, I would pay off his college tuition. As you probably expected, I absolutely deleted him in that 1v1. That's right, no tuition for you. This dude says he's still working on the place, but I think it's really cool and I can't wait to see what he builds next. I was running around with my earth bending on my avatar Minecraft server when I found this giant sinkhole. At first, I thought it was some guy's mine, but it turned out to be a huge secret city built below bedrock. But wait, how is that even possible? We actually use a custom map on the server and it looks like there's a missing chunk in the world. Players must have found that missing chunk and because the 1.18 update added negative Y levels, they were able to build in the void. The entire place is built on floating platforms, most of which are connected by a road network. There's a bunch of cool stuff down here, including some upside down homes, farms, pixel art, and some more cool stuff. Judging by the density, there are likely several hundred players who call this place their home. Dude, you hey, what, what's y'all's body count? To be honest, I'm at like 33. Okay. But okay. for sure this year Damn. though, this year is gonna be the year I do it with a girl though. Can one earthbender defeat 500 skeletons on my avatar Minecraft server? This is gonna be a tricky one, ladies and gentlemen. There are hundreds of skeletons in here and thousands of arrows flying every which way. As you can tell, he stops for cover a few times to regen his health, and at the same time, he also makes great use of his earth armor, mitigating some of the projectile damage. Luckily for him, he got a bunch of the skeletons to fight each other, which definitely helped ease the pressure. As he was finishing off the horde, he used this technique I've never even seen before, called earth 
earth pillars. It was super effective and took out like 50 skeletons at once. Super cool. What should we try next? You look lonely. Can one waterbender defeat 500 skeletons on my avatar Minecraft server? I replaced the floor with ice so that our waterbending friend has convenient access to source blocks. He starts by grouping the skeletons up using his tidal wave ability, which is a great strategy because the aggressive ones will collide and begin fighting each other. Meanwhile, this guy is popping some ice walls for cover and running through the group super fast trying to dodge arrows. The last of the skeletons got super spread out, so he took them out one by one until there were none left. What bending? should we try next? Can one firebender defeat 500 skeletons on my avatar Minecraft server? This guy is going to take to the skies and circle around the skeletons a bit to get them to shoot arrows at each other. Then he's going to use his lightning bending to unleash a huge ball of energy on the crowd. Because he can fly faster than these skeletons can aim, he's going to try and spend as much time in the air as possible to reduce the chances of getting hit. A maneuver he seems to be quite fond of is activating his fire breath in midair. It almost looks like he's a dragon. After only a few minutes, he was able to take down all 500 skeletons. What should we try next? Can the Avatar, master of all four elements, defeat this guy's dad on my Avatar Minecraft server? Can one airbender defeat 500 skeletons on my avatar Minecraft server? He's gonna start by taking the high ground, plowing through the crowd with his tornado ability, hoping to eliminate as many skeletons as possible just using fall damage. Then he's gonna get into the group using his air shield to deflect incoming arrows back towards his enemies. He starts zooming around the arena, first grouping up skeletons to attack, then taking them out one by one with his airbending until there were none left. What should we try next? Watch these three new players players use bending for the first time on my avatar minecraft server. One of them is throwing away all their bending instructions because reading's no fun anyways. Oh, this guy's already playing around with some basic fire bending. Very nice. Oh, this chick figured out how to change water into ice. Let's check on the other guys. Looks like another one of them also learned phase change. Uh oh, I think he's trolling his friend with it. He's trying to trap his friend under the ice. Like, what, what is that? I hope these guys end up seeing this video. I'm in spectator right now, so they don't know they're being recorded. Also, if any of you guys have ever wanted to be in one of these videos, just hit that follow button and join my server. Could be you. I was running around with my airbending on my avatar Minecraft server when I found this really dope looking house. It actually turned out to be a castle owned by a player named Twitter Titan. Inside, this guy had a whole fish tank, a little working area, but it looks like the rest of the interior is still being worked on. Surrounding the place is a few other houses built in the same style as the castle and a huge bell tower, because why not? And across this bridge, there's even more cool buildings. It's really fascinating to see what you guys get up to on the server. Here are some cool moves you can use as an earthbender on my avatar Minecraft server. This first move is raise earth, and as the name suggests, you raise earth out of the ground. All I had to do was crouch. Next is earth tunnel. Same thing, all you have to do is crouch to activate the move, and this one's really good for mining. We also have earth shard. This one you tap crouch on up to five earthbendable blocks, and you can launch them at your enemies. These moves are incredibly simple and are great for players who are new to my server. Here's some cool moves you can use as a waterbender on my avatar Minecraft server. This first move is water spout. All I have to do to activate the move is punch and I'm able to walk on water bendable blocks and travel up to 24 blocks high. Next is wake fishing and as the name suggests you use this move for fishing and all I have to do is hold crouch. Can't forget about torrent. With this move you can either hold and release crouch to use the move defensively or you can hold crouch and punch to throw it at your enemies. These moves are really easy to learn and are great for players who are new to my server. Here's some cool moves you can use as a firebender on my avatar minecraft server. This first move is fire shots. Just tap crouch and you get this neat fireball in your hand which you can launch up to five times. Next is jets. This move lets you fly. Just run and jump to activate the move. It's almost like an elytra. We also have blaze. With this move you can cast fire at people. You can activate it by punching or by tapping crouch. These moves are incredibly simple and are great for players who are new to my server. Here's some cool moves you can use as an airbender on my avatar minecraft server. This first move is air blade. This ability is activated by punching and deals range damage to your enemies. 
Next is Air Scooter. All you have to do with this one is sprint, jump, and click, and now you travel super fast. We also have Suffocate, and yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. To activate the move, just hold crouch on an enemy and it will start to take constant damage. These moves are incredibly simple and are great for players who are new to my server. It's the remix, Lois. Let's go. Good morning, USA. Yeah. I've got a feeling that it's gonna be a wonderful day. Yeah. This sun in the sky has a smile on his face. Yeah. And he's shining a salute to the American race. Yeah. Yeah. It's the remix, Lois. Let's go. Good morning, USA. Yeah. I've got a feeling that it's gonna be a wonderful day. Yeah. This sun in the sky has a smile on his face. Yeah. And he's shining a salute to the American race. There is only one God, and his name is Death. And there is only one thing we say to Death. Not today. Okay, I'm turned. Time to party for a pussy boy and you get turned. I was flying around with my firebending on my avatar Minecraft server when I found this random suburban town in the middle of the desert. At first I was pretty confused because like, why is this even here? But then I found this casino and realized I must be in Nevada. There were a bunch of homes here, all built in the same American brick wall kind of style with some big paved roads in between. It looks like somebody is building and then selling all of these properties like a real estate agent. I even found one of the locals just chilling in their house. All in all, this place is pretty cool. Would you live in the Bender's MC suburbs. I found this brand new player using his airbending on my avatar Minecraft server. I decided to teleport him to his own private island. I unvanished and I told him that I was going to come back every morning for a week and make a video on the progress that he makes on his island. He got to work immediately chopping down some of those trees. You guys can consider this day one and make sure you guys come back tomorrow to see how much progress he's made. Yesterday, I found a brand new player on my avatar Minecraft server and I gave him his own private island to work on. I'll be following up every day for a week to see what he builds. Here's what he's done in the last 24 hours. He's went ahead and expanded his island a bit, replacing his oak tree farm with larger spruce trees. He's also built the foundation for what might be his house soon, but the real magic is downstairs. He's dug out a huge stairway to this big quartz room where he has this interesting heart-shaped nether portal. Make sure you follow me and come back in 24 hours to see what he builds next. Two days ago, I found a brand new player on my avatar Minecraft server and gave him his own own private island to work on. I'll be following up every day for a week to see what he builds. Today is day three and this is what he's done in the last 24 hours. He got to start on building his house on the wooden foundation he made the day before. It looks like it's going to be at least two stories high. He's also added this epic orange square in the middle of his island. Very cool. And downstairs he changed up his nether portal and he made it sort of like an optical illusion behind it where it looks like you're staring straight into the nether. Make sure you follow me and come back in 24 hours to see what he builds next. Three days Days ago, I found a brand new player on my avatar Minecraft server and I gave him his own private island to work on. I'll be following up every day for a week to see what he builds. Today is day four and this is what he's done in the last 24 hours. First thing I noticed was the massive beacon he constructed. It looks like he's been doing some trading with the other players on the server. Very nice. He also did some minimal work on his house, adding some more walls and floor plans, but he started a new project, 128 blocks above his island. He started constructing a massive dirigible airship. Super cool. Make sure you follow me and come back in 24 hours to see what he's built. Four days ago, I found a brand new player on my avatar Minecraft server and I gave him his own private island to work on. I'll be following up every day for a week to see what he builds. Today is day five and this is what he's done in the last 24 hours. It looks like he's done a bunch of work on his house. He's added a third floor and completed the roof. Besides the interior, all he has to do now is add some walls and some windows. It's starting to look more and more like a wooden lodge. Very cool. He also is able to complete his airship above the island, and spheres are pretty difficult to build in Minecraft, so he definitely gets some extra credit for that. Make sure you follow me and come back in 24 hours to see what he's built. Five days ago, I found a brand new player on my avatar Minecraft server, and I gave him his own private island to work on. I'll be following up every day for a week to see what he builds. Today is day six, and this is what he's done in the last 24 hours. While he hasn't done a bunch more work on his house, he did build a dock with a neat wooden boat at the other end of the island. The boat is small, but the attention to detail is great and 
I think it adds a bunch of life to his island. Tomorrow is day seven, which means I'll be concluding the series. Make sure you follow me and come back in 24 hours to see the finished product. One week ago, I found a brand new player on my Avatar Minecraft server, and I gave him his own private island to work on. I've been following up every day for a week to see what he's been building. Today is day seven, the final day, and this is what he's done in the last 24 hours. Unfortunately, he never completed his house, but it's about there. Like, you can see the full concept. He even added some balconies. He refuses to add stairs to his home because he likes to use his air bending to level his home instead. He also built himself a big axolotl tank. It's very fitting for this room and it adds a bunch of life. I want to give a big shout out to my man Joe, who despite not knowing me and being completely unfamiliar with my server, managed to build something great and I sure had fun recording him and watching him progressively improve his island. Best of luck to you, Joe, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, drop a like on the video and follow the channel. Hey, you like the bread, little booty? You like the bread? I fucking love this bread. I'm stronger! I'm smarter! I'm better! I am better! Okay guys, there isn't actually a secret message hidden in this video, but because I love ad revenue, we should all go to the comment section and pretend like the message was something super clever so we can get more people to waste their time. My name is Blitz Irwin, and today I'll be traveling deep below the surface of my Avatar Minecraft server to study an incredibly rare variety of earthbender, better known as lava benders. Stay tuned for an ultra close look at an incredibly rare species of benders never before seen by the public. Because of their high body temperature, lava benders prefer to live near pools of lava. This additionally provides them with a means of defense against any underground vermin that might cause them any trouble. Lava benders have also been observed to be very social creatures, complete with their own etiquette and mannerisms. Though usually hidden from sight, lava benders are extremely territorial and generally don't make exceptions for those trespassing on their domiciles, including our camera crew, who was spotted just after wrapping up filming. We were forced to leave in a hurry, but tune in next time for a deep dive into plant benders. Did you know, if you're an earthbender on my Avatar Minecraft server, you can use your earth pillar ability to build yourself some free real estate? If you press crouch on an earthbendable block, you can raise a strip of stone to help build some walls. Just plop a door on that thing and build a ceiling. Did you know, if you use your wake fishing ability as a waterbender, you can pass your raw fish to your firebending friend who can cook it in their hands. Firebenders can also light furnaces with their fire blast ability, so basically infinite fuel glitch. Don't believe in global warming? Firebenders can use that same cooking ability to melt ice blocks. Become the global warmer. Are you tired of being sniped by skeletons? Well, if you're a waterbender on my Avatar Minecraft server, you can activate this handy move called Octopus Form, which protects you just like a shield, but from all four sides, and it has infinite durability. What's even more cool is that waterbenders can activate this ability in any dimension, including the nether and the end, so you'll always be able to defend yourself. One of the coolest things earthbenders can do on my Minecraft server is metal bend. Okay, unlike the last clip, you probably won't have dozens of iron blocks lying Lying around for you to bend at people, but metal bending has a bunch of different moves like shrapnel. As long as you have iron nuggets in your inventory, you can blast them at people like bullets. You can even choose between burst and single shot. Can't forget about metal hook. This one basically turns you into Spider-Man, letting you quickly grapple to any surface within 50 blocks of you. Another personal favorite of mine is metal fragments. All you need is a gold or iron block and you can shoot ingots out of it like a turret. I actually like to place these around my house, so I always have some metal around just in case. What a lot of people who play on my Minecraft server don't know is that plant bending is actually a sub-element of water bending. But wait, Blitz, wouldn't that technically be earth bending? Well, considering plants are 95% water, that wouldn't exactly make sense. The main feature of plant bending on the server is found in the plant armor ability. With plant armor, you just hold crouch on some leaves and you get this awesome vine suit. What's so cool about this ability is that just like Superman, the powers are all in the costume. Plant armor allows you to activate five different moves basically the Swiss army knife of bending. You can create leaf shields to protect yourself, swing on vines like a makeshift grappling hook, and even throw deadly leaf discs at your enemies. Plus, you can't drown or take fall damage while you have the suit on. If you've ever played on my Minecraft server, you're probably familiar with lightning bending. 
And for those who aren't, lightning bending is actually just a sub element of fire bending. And listen, I know what you're thinking. Lightning bending is probably ridiculously overpowered, and that's because it is. Aside from making supercharged creepers or converting villagers into witches to troll your friends, it is an extremely capable and versatile fighting style. Just like Emperor Palpatine, you can shoot lightning bolts from your fingertips. And if being a Sith Lord isn't cool enough, you can electrocute conductive surfaces like metal and water sources to slowly fry your enemies to a crisp. And the best part is, you don't have to wait for a thunderstorm to use your abilities. You can unleash the power of lightning bending anytime, anywhere. You might have thought that the only way to fly on my Minecraft server was to fast click with your airbending abilities, but what if I told you that there's actually a way to fly with any of the four elements on my server? To get started, let's see how the earthbenders do it. Using your earth smash ability, hold and then release crouch on an earthbendable surface to get yourself a boulder. Then just hop on top of that thing, hold crouch again, and you will fly in whichever direction you're looking. Moving on to fire bending, all you have to do is activate your jets ability by clicking and you will be able to fly for a few hundred blocks. Lastly, we have water bending, and if you're already familiar with the water spout ability, that move actually has its own flight function. Just hold crouch and punch a water source, then release crouch while looking in the direction you want to fly. Imagine you're exploring the ocean on my Minecraft server, and you come across some underwater ruins, but you're afraid that if you dive to get the treasure, you risk the chance of losing your inventory. Rest assured, my friend, as long as you're a water bender, you can activate this handy move called water bubble, which creates a pocket of air for you to breathe in. But what if you're underground mining for loot and you suddenly run out of torches? As long as you're a firebender, you can use your heat control ability to instantly convert your extra sticks into free torches. But let's say you keep mining in that cave for a while and eventually lose track of where you are. Stacking up to the surface is certainly going to take a long time. Instead, just use your dig ability as an earthbender and you'll be able to tunnel to the surface in seconds. Every element on my server has dozens of attacks and useful abilities you can use to fight and survive, but there are some hidden abilities that can only be activated by performing a specific sequence of moves. These are called bending combos, and as the name suggests, combos are a combination of your standard bending abilities. Some of these combos are really easy, such as Fire Kick, which is performed by activating Fire Blast three times and crouching, but other combos like Water Gimbal, Twister, or Magma Blast require a certain level of finesse to perform. You can get instructions for every combo by running the command slash B help and the name of the combo. This will post a detailed explanation of how to activate the combo and what moves are required in your chat. The missile knows where it is at all times. It knows this because it knows where it isn't. By subtracting where it is from where it isn't, or where it isn't from where it is, to a position where it isn't, and arriving at a position where it wasn't, it now is. I've been making videos about my Minecraft server nearly every day for the past two years, but what exactly makes my server so cool that it would warrant that kind of attention? Well, for starters, you can bend the four elements, which are magical powers you can harness based on water, earth, fire, and wind. These powers are good for fighting and even better at helping you survive. Also, no strings attached. You join the server and pick a power set and you can change your powers whenever you want. Pretty simple as long as you read the instructions. The server is also cross-play between Java and Bedrock, so you can play with any of your friends no matter what device or version they use. But what I like most about my server is how it brings people together. There have been more than a million users who have played on my server, thousands of which I've personally met, and uh, you guys are awesome by the way. Every day is somebody's first day on the server, and consequently also somebody's last. But that's just the circle of life here. If you want to do something cool on my Minecraft server, I'd recommend checking out Lava Bending. Yes, every Minecrafter's worst fear is now your very own magical power. Pretty terrifying, right? But let's clear one thing up first. Lava Bending is a sub-element of Earth Bending, not Fire Bending, which is because lava is actually just molten rock. So if you're looking to Lava Bend, pick Earth when you join. Okay, besides being able to incinerate every entity who even looks in your direction, a handy move you might always want to have equipped is Lava Disc, which creates this epic molten frisbee that you can use to go through walls and of course throw at people. Also, this would probably be a good time to mention that you are not immune to lava, which is because you are made of flesh, so be careful.
If you've ever played on my Minecraft server, you might be familiar with the economy. You know, that fancy system where you make money by purchasing and selling different items? You probably already use your bending powers to save money, like cooking food in your hand as a firebender to save on fuel, or mining with your earth bending to save on pickaxe durability. But how does one exactly make money on my server? Like on other servers, there are a bunch of different methods to make an income. You can grow crops, raise cattle, build mob grinders, and much more. But the holy grail of money making on my server is... Mining granite. Yes, the worst decoration block ever added to the game can now make you rich. Best part is, it's literally everywhere. An entire inventory of granite can sell at the shops for upwards of $300,000. I don't know why you're still watching this video when you could be on the server mining granite. One of the most common questions I get from new players on my Minecraft server is how do I bend? If you want to figure out how to harness the power of the four elements on my server, all you have to do is run these two commands. First is slash choose, which brings up a menu where you can select your bending. Or you could also type slash bending choose and then the element you want if you've already figured it out. Last command is slash kit books, which gives you a book on how to bend every element on my server. But Blitz, I don't like reading. Well, that's too bad because you're going to. If you've played on my Minecraft server recently, you might have noticed that we're having some performance issues, most noticeably the lag. As of recently, our server traffic has reached incredible volumes. We've just been like really busy lately. And listen, like any server owner, I'd rather have an issue with too many players on my server than too few. So I'm not complaining, but this comes with its own unique set of problems. So many people are trying to enjoy the server at once that our machines can't handle it. And I'm already working on scaling the infrastructure of the server to accommodate more players at the same time. The server is just going through a bit of growth pains and I wanted to let you guys know that we are working on the issue and thank you for being so patient with us. I've been showing off the sub-elemental bendings you can use on my server, like plant bending, metal bending, lava bending, and more, right? But it seems like a lot of you guys are confused on how to actually get these sub-elements. Well, I'm about to blow your mind, ready? You actually get them when you join. No special quest or grind you have to do, even though that would be cool, you just join the server and you get most of them. I can't just make these epic videos, then gatekeep those cool abilities. That wouldn't be any fun, right? Next time you're on the server, just run the command slash bending display and the sub element you want to get a list of moves you can use. Every one of the four elements have something unique to offer on my Minecraft server. Whether that helps you survive, explore, or defend yourself, every bending has its own perks. But what is the most difficult bending to master? I'll just cut to the chase, it's air bending. Sometimes regarded as the worst bending on my server, because why would you air bend when you could bend lava or freeze people, right? Actually excels in defense and movement capabilities. You'll find that the highest skilled users on my server are most often airbenders. This is because they're satisfied with the low damage output of the element and use their other capabilities to compensate for that. Using your abilities to dodge and weave attacks can be even more useful than dealing high damage because you're never gonna lose if you never get hit. Anyways, I still hate them. People who play on my Minecraft server are always asking me what my favorite bending is. this epic TNT cyclone on my Minecraft server. First thing you need to do is pick air bending and bind the ability tornado. Second, you'll need to make a repeating redstone loop which you'll hook up to your TNT dispensers. Last step, just turn on your dispensers and hold crouch on the TNT. While I'm sure this is a great way to wipe out your enemies, it's also pretty hilarious. Lots of people love the bending function on my Minecraft server. It's great for fighting and surviving and can overall enhance the regular vanilla Minecraft experience. But there are some things that just don't quite make sense on my server, but in my opinion, just makes the experience more entertaining. For example, if you have a water bottle in your inventory, you can actually water bend in the nether. Crazy, right? You can also lava bend underwater. But wait, it gets stupider. You can even blood bend skeletons, even though they don't have any. What? What the hell? What's wrong with you? Sex! What? Sex! Ah! Like a lot of Minecraft server owners, I occasionally troll my players. I'll never go as far as destroying somebody's house or making them lose all their items because that's just disrespectful to the effort they put into the server. But I do have my fair share of unusual trolling techniques. For example, the Shrieker Pit. What the hell is the Shrieker Pit, you may ask? It is a single chunk dug out to bedrock filled with Skulk Shriekers hooked up to a Skulk sensor. So anybody who even takes a step down here will activate all of the Shriekers at once, which is not very pleasant on the ears. And might I also mention there are multiple layers of Shriekers. I'll throw just about anybody in here. People who ask for bending help, people who argue in chat, and of course, brand new players, because I like to make a good first impression. Rest assured, there are no Wardens down here, and it's a PvP-free zone, so you won't lose 
any of your stuff, and you can just TP back to spawn whenever you want. So with the exception of needing hearing aids after you get out, it's pretty much harmless. So today's the big day. You might have tried to log into my server today, but surprise, it doesn't let you. No, your Minecraft isn't broken, and yes, you will still get to use those epic bending moves. About a week ago, I said we were working on upgrading our server so we can improve performance and reduce lag, because we actually listen to you guys. And those upgrades are taking place right now. So the server will likely be down all day today and part of tomorrow. By the time you end up watching this video, the server will probably already be online. A lot of new players on my Minecraft server have been asking me, Hey Blitz, are you able to switch your elemental powers, or is the choice you make permanent? Rest assured my friends, you can switch elements anytime you want with the slash choose command, or by interacting with the NPCs at spawn. Don't worry, you're not just stuck with one forever. I'd actually recommend giving all of them a try, so you can figure out which one's the best for you. What's great about the elements is that each of them offer a unique skill set. Water and fire are great for fighting, earth is undoubtedly the best for survival, and air is good for fast travel. Remember guys, on my Minecraft server, the choice is yours. Imagine this, you just joined my Minecraft server, chose water as your elemental power, randomly teleported into the survival world, but you spawned in a desert with absolutely no water in sight. Here's what you need to do. Start walking, look around for any desert wells or villages. If you can't find any, look for cacti. They should be everywhere. Have your water spout move equipped and you can actually use the moisture inside the cactus as a water source block. Then just propel yourself out of the desert. Water spout doesn't go forever, so you might need to collect a few cacti to get yourself all the way out. Have you ever been mining in the dark on my Minecraft server and noticed a strange torch that appears on the ground and starts following you? Don't panic, this is normal. The torch actually follows you because of a firebending passive called Illumination, which activates when you enter areas with low light levels. Every bending on my server has different passive abilities. For example, waterbenders can swim faster in the water and run quicker on ice. Earthbenders won't take fall damage and jump higher when they're on earthbendable blocks. And air Airbenders have a permanent speed and jump boost and are immune to all fall damage. Best part about these abilities is that they'll activate automatically. If you've had a chance to hop on my Minecraft server, you've probably played around with metal bending. Metal is a sub-element of earth bending, and besides the awesome grappling ability and being able to manipulate iron blocks, metal bending has a bunch of cool and useful applications you probably never knew it had. Like being able to open iron doors and trap doors without any redstone, good for keeping intruders out. Or or the quick weld ability, which allows you to repair iron tools with ingots in your inventory. And let's not forget about extraction, this move lets you collect fully smelted ingots from iron and gold ore. No furnaces required. The day cycle in Minecraft is approximately 20 minutes long, and unless you get everybody to sleep, it'll work the same way on my Minecraft server. What some players don't know is that the time of day on my server can affect how powerful your bending is. For example, fire bending is more powerful during the daytime. Not only can it do more damage, but some moves even have extended range or larger area of effect. On the other hand, water bending is more powerful at night because, you know, the moon controls the tides, blah blah blah. I mean, the same thing, it's pretty cool. So next time the day or night cycle ends, don't panic, just make sure you have the right bending equipped. If you choose earth bending on my Minecraft server, you get access to this cool ability called earth armor, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You just tap crouch on any earth bendable block, and you equip a temporary armor set. This move can be super handy if you're mining and get pinned down by some mobs, or as a quick defense strategy against other players. A small detail I really like about the ability is that the color of your armor will change based on what block you activated the move on. For example, if you use stone, your armor will be gray, or red for netherrack, and even beige for sand. It works with a bunch of other blocks too. Since our launch in 2020, my Minecraft server has been visited by over a million different users. While the main appeal of my project is certainly those awesome elemental powers you see in the videos, most people end up staying on my server for completely different reasons. I created my server as a way for people to spend their leisure time. Let's face it, the real world is hard. Going to school, going to work, people sometimes just need a place to escape. Having become one of the largest Minecraft server communities in the world, I can say with confidence that you'll never be alone here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason they call us the server that never sleeps. 
Currently, there are two different game modes on my Minecraft server, Factions and Survival. Both let you have access to the four elemental powers, but what exactly is the difference? If you're looking to wage wars and conquer your enemies using the forces of nature, look no further because you'd likely prefer the Factions mode. Keep in mind that griefing is allowed in this game mode, but building your bases with your friends and getting them sieged is all just part of the fun. Now, if you're looking to build towns and create long-standing civilizations, I'd recommend the classic survival mode. It's a slower pace compared to factions, and you can claim and grief protect your land. And we also just generally encourage you guys to behave more civilized. Since the server is so busy right now, we're also going to be adding a brand new game mode, which I'll be making a video on very soon. This is earthbending on my Minecraft server, Noob vs. Pro Edition. First up is our noob, who's gonna start off by demonstrating his earth kick ability. Next, our pro is going to use that same move, but he's gonna combine it with his earth pillar to give it some extra range. What about movement abilities? Our noob is gonna activate his earth surf, which allows him to fast travel over earth blocks, but our pro is going to use his earth smash ability to fly. Very impressive. Next up, our noob is going to use earth line, a move which can stun your opponents. But our pro is going to use the crevice combo instead, which opens up a huge ravine for your enemies to fall into. Last up is mining. Our noob is going to use his earth tunnel ability to look for ores, but our pro is going to use his dig ability to quickly locate a cave to loot. Which player did it better, noob or pro? Let me know in the comments. This is firebending on my Minecraft server, noob versus pro edition. First up is our noob, who's gonna start off by demonstrating his fire shots ability. Next, our pro is gonna use fire disc, a pretty similar move, but it packs more of a punch. What about movement abilities? Our noob is gonna activate his fire jet ability, which lets him do a quick flame dash, but our pro is going to use his jets ability to fly. Super cool. Next up is survival abilities. Our noob is gonna use his heat control to cook food in his hand and instantly turn sticks into torches. But our pro is going to use his fire blast ability to ignite his furnaces. Now he can smell anything for free. Last up is defense. Our noob is going to use his fire shield ability to give himself some 360 degree protection. But our pro is going to use his wall of fire ability to block his enemy and then outmaneuver them with his jets. Which player did it better, noob or pro? Let me know in the comments. This is airbending on my Minecraft server, noob versus pro edition. First up is our noob, who's going to start off by demonstrating his air blade ability. Next, our pro is going to use Gale Gust, a high damaging attack move that can hit multiple enemies at once. What about movement abilities? Our noob is going to activate his air scooter, which lets him ride around on a magic air bubble. But our pro is going to use the air wheel combo to travel even faster and plow through his enemies. How about crowd control? Check out our noob. He's going to use his tornado ability to whirl away his enemies. But our pro is going to use his twister combo to brush his enemies aside with a powerful typhoon. Last up is defense. Our noob is going to use his air shield ability for some 360 degree protection, but our pro is going to use his mirage ability to become invisible and elude his enemies. Which player did it better, noob or pro? Let me know in the comments. This is waterbending on my Minecraft server, noob versus pro edition. First up is our noob, who is going to start off by demonstrating his water manipulation attack. Next, our pro is going to use the water gimbal combo, which utilizes two spinning rings of water and can be thrown at his enemies. What about movement abilities? Our noob is going to activate his water spout, which lets him forcefully propel himself in any direction. But our pro is going to use the grapple function on his water arms to scale walls and travel even faster. How about survival? Our noob is going to use his wake fishing ability to catch fish on demand and fill his hunger bars. But our pro is going to use his hydrotherapy ability to quickly regenerate his health. Last up is defense. Our noob is going to use his octopus form for some 360 degree protection. But our pro is going to use his torrent ability to disperse his opponents. Additionally, this move can also be used to freeze your enemies. Which player did it better, noob or pro? Let me know in the comments. Something I don't talk about very often on my Minecraft server is a secret fighting ability called chi blocking. Well, it's not very secret since it's one of the main options in your bending menu, but chi blocking isn't a bending at all. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Chi blocking is a martial arts style developed to counter people with bending abilities. You can run super fast, dodge attacks, blind your enemies, and even paralyze them. Chi blocking is essentially Minecraft PvP on 
fucking steroids. So, for those asking me to make a video on chi blocking, I hope you're happy. Here it is, and it's incredibly boring. I have no idea who the hell would ever use this crap when you could just use earthbending instead. Earthbending on my Minecraft server has some really cool sub elements that you can play around with. Recently, I've made a few videos about metal and lava bending, which have become fan favorites among the player base. But there's one earth sub element that's more or less forgotten because of how little it's mentioned, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is sand bending. While sand might not be the most useful sub bending, it does still have an interesting set of abilities for you to equip and use. For example, with the sand manipulation ability, you can shoot sand bendable blocks at your enemies, which you can also burst in midair, or the Dust Devil's ability, which creates a mini sandstorm to protect your character from nearby enemies. Can't forget about Sand Blast. This ability throws sand, which deals damage and blinds your opponents. Okay, sand might not be the most powerful element in the game, but it sure is annoying. Yesterday, I made a video on the forgotten earthbending sub-elements, sandbending. But later, I realized that airbending on my Minecraft server also has a secret sub-element. However, it's a little bit more obscure. Let me introduce you to soundbending. Perhaps the most useless element in the game. Or is it? Soundbending has a few abilities, the first one being Sonic Wave, which deals no attack damage, but it will apply the nausea effect to your enemies, plus it makes this ridiculously annoying beeping sound whenever it's used. Next is Vocal Mimicry, an ability that lets you mimic any sound in Minecraft. And now that I think about it, this is probably an insane trolling tool. Like, imagine you go invisible and start making creeper noises while your friend is mining. You can also use this move as like a free jukebox since you can just mimic the sound of each disc. I can't tell if this is really awesome or just really stupid. Let me know in the comments. Imagine this, you joined my Minecraft server and picked waterbending as your elemental power. Then you teamed up with your friends and headed to the nether. You spot a bastion filled with loot, but it's across a huge pool of lava. As long as you have a water bottle in your inventory, Inventory, you can use your surge ability to cast a temporary obsidian bridge for you to walk over. Isn't that crazy? Water bending in the nether? But that's not all. Additionally, if you had chosen air bending as your elemental power, you could just activate your air spout ability and just levitate right over the lava. So cool! Now you can collect the loot. Oh, never mind, you got brutally dissected by piglins. These are a few building hacks you can do with your earthbending on my Minecraft server. First up is this really simple earthbending door, which is great for disguising bases hidden in cave systems. The door can be opened and closed with the earth pillar ability, and you can make this door as big or as small as you'd like. Next, if you have an underground home that isn't in a cave system, as long as you have a stone ceiling, you can just use your dig ability to discreetly enter and exit your home whenever you please. This last trick can be used in any base setup. All it requires you to do is place some extra iron or gold blocks around, so you can use your metal bending to turn those into turrets, just in case you run into any trouble. These are a few building hacks you can do with your water bending on my Minecraft server. First up, we have a water bending door that you can open and close with your phase change ability. Just melt the ice to go through and freeze it again to close it. Next, we have this really simple water bending elevator. When standing above a water source block, you can use your water spout ability to levitate up to 24 blocks high. This function can easily be incorporated into any multi-level home setup. Last trick is great for improving traveling speeds around your base. Waterbenders receive a temporary speed boost whenever they run over ice blocks. Just place some packed or blue ice every 10 or 20 blocks and you'll be able to run around your base more than twice as fast. These are some illegal bending techniques you can use on my Minecraft server. If you're a waterbender, you get access to the abilities water bubble and water spout. You can levitate with water spout and create air pockets to breathe with water bubble. By activating water spout and then holding jump and crouch at the same time on your water bubble ability, you can combine these two moves and walk on water underwater. Pretty cool. Next, we have an interesting trick for metal benders. Just get yourself a piece of soul sand and place it underwater. Then just throw your metal hook ability at the soul sand and you'll be able to fly temporarily within a 30 block radius. Last technique is for all my fire benders. If you have the ability fire breath equipped, you can type this certain phrase in chat, which I'll put on screen, and your fire breath will become multicolored. Because who wouldn't want to breathe rainbow fire? These are some more illegal bending techniques you can use on my Minecraft server. All water benders get access to octopus form and water spout. Similar to the bending technique from last video, you can combine these two abilities by holding jump and crouch at the same time to make a moving water tower. It's great for taking out phantoms. Next one is for all my airbenders. Let's say you're exploring with your friend and he takes a little too much fall damage in a not so easy to reach area. You want to make sure his stuff doesn't despawn, so you use your air suction ability to vacuum up his items. Last trick is 
for firebenders. With your lightning bending, you get access to the bolt ability, which casts, well, a lightning bolt. You can use this to make charged creepers, witches, piglins, and even the very rare brown mushroom. Quick update on my Minecraft server, a lot of you guys seem concerned that our player queue system wasn't working properly on the server, and because I'm actually willing to listen to you people, I paid a professional to code us a brand new custom queue plugin which we just installed on the network, and it looks like we've solved the issue. Thank you guys for being so patient, I know a bunch of you guys have been really excited to start bending, especially my American viewers who will likely have most of this week off for Thanksgiving. We're still working on some overall server upgrades and improvements, we've got some cool new updates and game modes that are going to be added soon, which I'll try my best to get out before winter holiday, but for now the server should be considerably easier to connect to. This is how you can create a whirlpool with your water bending on my Minecraft server. First thing you want to do, pretty obvious, is choose water as your elemental power. Next, you're going to want to equip the moves torrent and water bubble. You should also run the command slash behelp maelstrom to receive instructions on how to use the maelstrom whirlpool combo. When performing the ability, make sure you activate it on a body of water that is at least four blocks or deeper. Any nearby players or entity will be sucked inside the whirlpool. A neat trick you can do, using the water flow ability, you can actually pick up players or entities and then throw them inside the whirlpool if they're not close enough. Five things new players should know about waterbending on my Minecraft server. Number one, waterbenders won't take fall damage on ice or snow blocks. Number two, you can use the wake fishing ability to catch raw fish on demand, which is effectively an infinite food source. Number three, waterbending abilities deal more damage and have a larger area of effect during the nighttime. Number four, you can use water bending anywhere you want as long as you have a water bottle in your inventory. No source blocks required. Number five, all water benders automatically get access to the plant bending sub element, which has its own unique set of abilities. How many of these features did you know? Let me know in the comments. Five things new players should know about earth bending on my Minecraft server. Number one, with earth bending you get access to three different sub elements. Lava bending, metal bending, and sand bending. Number two, earthbenders don't take fall damage and receive a jump and speed boost when on top of earthbendable blocks. Number three, the earth tunnel ability lets you mine without using pickaxe durability, and you can also use the extraction move to instantly receive ingots from metal ores. Number four, with the earth glove ability, you can break your fall on stone walls or ledges. Number five, you can effectively use your earthbending in any dimension as all your moves will work on netherrack and endstone. How many of these these features did you know? Let me know in the comments. Five things new players should know about firebending on my Minecraft server. Number one, you can use your heat control ability to melt ice, cook food in your hand, and even turn sticks into torches. Number two, firebenders can fly with the jets ability, but be careful because it only lets you fly short distances. And by the way, you do take fall damage. Number three, your firebending powers will deal more damage and have an increased area of effect during the daytime. Number four, all firebenders get access to the lightning bending sub element, which is shockingly powerful. Number five, by using the fire shield ability, you become immune to all projectile damage. How many of these features did you know? Tell me in the comments. Five things new players should know about airbending on my Minecraft server. Number one, you can fly with your air blast ability by spam clicking and holding crouch. Number two, airbenders can't take fall damage, always have a speed and jump boost, and their hunger depletes at a slower rate. Number three, all airbenders get access to the sound bending sub element, which you can use to produce any sound sound effect in Minecraft. Number four, you can suck the air out of your enemy's lungs by using the suffocation ability and it's actually pretty terrifying. Number five, with the Mirage ability, you can temporarily become invisible to evade danger. How many of these features did you know? Let me know in the comments. These are the most satisfying bending abilities you can use on my Minecraft server. First up is Water Flow, which is a combo ability that creates a powerful water torrent, which you can use to pick up mobs or travel with. Next, we have Shockwave, an earth bending ability that's great for knockback and effective crowd control. We also have Fire Disc, which launches a flaming frisbee that you can control Control. The air burst ability is also quite satisfying. This move is really good at pushing people out of your way. Moving on to the sub elements, the plant walk ability for waterbenders creates a magic vine that grabs onto your character and allows you to fly within short distances. Can't forget about the fissure ability for lava benders. This move casts a pool of lava that you can expand by pressing crouch. These are the most frequently asked questions I get about my Minecraft server. 
First off, how do you join? Go to the multiplayer tab and key in the IP play.bendersmc.co and click join. Also, make sure you're connecting to servers and not Minecraft Realms. Next is the server for Java or Bedrock. My server is actually cross compatible for both versions, so you can play with all your friends no matter what devices they use. If you need any help, we have connection tutorials on our Discord. How do you start bending? First, you're going to want to run the command slash choose to open up the GUI where you can select your elemental power. Then, run the command slash kit books to get written instructions on how to use every bending type. Also, how often can you change your bending types? On my server, you can change your elemental powers anytime you want. And I'd actually encourage you to give all of them a try so you can find which one works best for you. Waterbending is one of the most versatile elements on my Minecraft server because it can be used practically anywhere. You can turn ice blocks and snow tiles into water sources and even use the moisture inside of plants as a way to activate your bending abilities. But what a lot of people don't know is that there is a combo that lets you literally assimilate waterbending moves out of thin air, and that combo is rain bending. With rain bending, you're able to draw water from the humidity in the air. You can use this ability no matter what the weather conditions are, but it will be most most efficient while it's raining. This move can be very useful for those who get stuck in places without water, like deserts or cave systems. And unlike other water bending abilities, you cannot activate rain bending in the nether. It will only work in the overworld and also for some reason the end. There are four different types of Minecraft players. The builder, the miner, the hunter, and the one who does a bit of everything. And on my Minecraft server, there is an elemental power to fit anybody's playstyle. For example, if you're the builder of the group, I'd recommend choosing airbending. You can use the air spout ability for free scaffolding, and since you're immune to fall damage, you don't have to be afraid of building in high places. But if you're the miner of the group, I'd certainly recommend choosing earthbending. You can use your earth tunnel ability to mine without using a pickaxe, and you can use your extraction ability to instantly collect fully smelted ingots from metal ores. Now, for my hunters, I'd recommend choosing firebending. Your heat control ability will definitely come in clutch when you need to cook all the raw meat you've been gathering for your friends. And if you don't fit any of these rules specifically, and you just do a bit of everything, I'd recommend waterbending, since it's one of the most versatile elements on my server. You can use it for traveling, fighting, and surviving. About a month ago, I made a video where I talked about the hardest element to master on my Minecraft server, airbending. But that got a lot of people wondering what the easiest element on my server to master is. I'm gonna cut right to the chase here, it's most definitely earthbending. And this is for a few reasons. First off, the controls are really easy to learn. When you first join the server, the whole bending thing can come off as a little intimidating. But because earthbending is so simple to use, mostly just crouching or punching, it's a great framework for anybody who's new to the game. Another the reason is that it has a very high damage output, so you don't have to be great at the game to absolutely wreck your opponents with earthbending. I also recently posted a poll on my YouTube channel where I asked you guys what the best bending type was, and earthbending won by a landslide 68% of the votes. Now, this doesn't mean earth is actually the best element, because it does have its flaws, but it does indicate the community's preference. Imagine this, you're playing around with your lava bending on my Minecraft server, and you accidentally fall into a pool of your own lava. Don't panic, you can still save yourself. There's actually a lava bending technique called shaking off lava that allows you to extinguish your flames and save your items just by pressing crouch. But that's not all. If you get set on fire while you're surrounded by hostile mobs or players, you can use that same ability to transfer your fire tick to nearby enemies. So not only can this ability save your life, it's also handy for some quick defense. This move is a must have for anybody who spends a lot of time mining or exploring the nether, and also definitely have this ability equipped if you're going up against any firebenders. Alright, picture this. You're deep underground on my Minecraft server looking for some diamonds. You manage to locate a vein, but just as you finish mining it, your pickaxe breaks. You don't have any more sticks, you're running out of food, and worst of all, you can't even find your way out of the cave. You start losing hope, but then you remember you can use your earthbending powers to escape. If you equip the dig ability, you can hold crouch on earthbendable blocks and instantly tunnel back to the surface. Excellent job! You've escaped with the diamonds, and you'll probably even make it home for dinner. This is what bending on my Minecraft server would look like with RTX shaders on. I put the settings to the max on these babies, and some of the moves do look pretty cool, but the performance suffers dramatically, and some of the lighting isn't very easy on the eyes. 
personally, I'm not a huge fan of the ray tracing shaders for bending. Also, my PC can barely keep up, but I did this for your entertainment, so enjoy the video. Also, for those wondering what shader pack I have on, I'm using the SUS PTGI shaders for Java 1.19. If you've played Minecraft before, you've probably also done a water bucket clutch to save yourself from a bad fall. Or, at the very least, you've probably seen it in popular YouTube videos. On my Minecraft server, you get access to the four elemental bending powers, which will allow you to take your clutches to the next level. For example, earthbenders don't take fall damage on earthbendable blocks, so you can literally clutch with a dirt block if you want to. But with water bending, you don't even need a bucket to clutch. As long as you have water bottles in your inventory, you can use your surge ability to clutch and save yourself and even your friends. Firebenders need to be extra careful since they can take fall damage anywhere. But if you use your fire jet ability, you can perform a dash in midair right before you hit the ground. And airbenders don't even have to clutch. They have fall damage immunity no matter what they fall on, so you can practically laugh at gravity. If you're like me, you probably enjoy trolling your friends in Minecraft. Whether you do it as an act of revenge, or you just like pulling pranks, everybody likes to have a bit of fun. On my Minecraft server, you get access to the four elemental powers, and these are some abilities that will take your trolling game to the next level. First, we have the Surge ability. Let's say you just introduced your friend to the server, and they won't stop testing their bending moves on you. Just throw the Surge ability at them and press Crouch, and you can keep them inside a ball of ice until they stop being annoying. Next, we have the Collapse ability. If you're mining with your friend and they start stealing your minerals, you can use your earthbending to collapse the cavern on top of them. Because if you can't have the diamonds, no one can. We also have Vocal Mimicry, which is an airbending move that lets you mimic any sound effect in Minecraft. So, let's say your friend is busy building themselves a house. You can sneak up on them and mimic the creeper noise, which will literally make their soul exit their body. These are some of the most underrated bending abilities on my Minecraft server. First up, we have Frost Cuffs, which is a water bending ability that shoots a pair of ice handcuffs at your enemy and applies the weakness effect. Next, Earthbenders can use the Earthline ability, and what a lot of people don't know is that this move has a hidden function which you can use to trap your enemies. Firebenders get access to the Lightning ability, which allows the user to release a powerful bolt of energy that can damage multiple enemies at once. Last up is Airbending, or should I say, Fart Bending. The Flatulate ability allows the user to propel themselves into the air using gases stored in the stomach. You could combine this move with air glide to easily travel long distances. Sounds like another excuse to go to Taco Bell. Imagine if somehow mobs were able to use bending powers on my Minecraft server just like the players can. This got me thinking, what element would each mob type use? Well, goats live in the mountains, so they could probably earth bend. Iron golems are literally made of metal, so they would definitely metal bend. Husks spend most of their time in the desert, so they would probably be our sand benders. Squids and dolphins rule the seas, so they would be our water benders. Polar bears live on icebergs, so by that logic, they'd ice bend, and panda bears would plant bend since they live in jungles. Blazes would be fire benders, even though they kinda already are. Creepers would definitely be combustion benders, and charge creepers would be lightning benders. Phantoms would be air benders because, well, you know, they can fly. And finally, since bats already use echolocation, they would be sound benders. Here's how you can make a punji spike trap that you can activate with your earth bending on my Minecraft server. First, dig a hole any size, but make sure it isn't too small and try to make it at least 24 blocks deep. Next, fill the bottom of your pit with some pointed dripstone to ensure that your enemies will take maximum fall damage. Then, cover the top of your pit with either one or two layers of earth bendable blocks. Now that you've finished your trap, you can lure people over the pit and then use your dig ability to excavate the floor out from beneath your enemies. And what's so neat about the dig ability is that the blocks will regenerate really fast, so if somebody manages to survive your trap or tries to fly out, they definitely won't make it very far. We're launching a brand new Minecraft server, Pirates MC, which will be a Pirates RPG adventure server. You'll be able to build and sail actual pirate ships and have battles with your friends. You can raid islands with your crew and take on some insane boss fights and much more. But the craziest part about this project is that all of this stuff that you're seeing here was coded in regular vanilla Minecraft. This 
this is quite possibly one of the most immersive Minecraft experiences ever made. The server is expected to release later this month, but if you want to be the first to know the actual release date, make sure you subscribe to the Pirates MC YouTube channel with notifications on. And for anybody who might be concerned about what this means for Bender's MC, do not worry because this project is being overseen by a different group of resources, so there won't be any less work being done on the bending server. In honor of the holiday season, these are the best ice bending abilities that you can use on my Minecraft server. I'm here with Old Saint Nick, and we're going to start off with Ice Drill, a water bending combo that summons a giant spike of ice that can go through walls. Next up is Ice Crawl, a really handy move that can freeze your enemies if they try to get away. Can't forget about Phase Change, this move is really simple, as it just turns water into ice and vice versa. We also have Ice Wall, which is a defensive ability that quickly raises a wall of ice to protect you. And last, we have Ice Spike, a high damaging attack move that impales your enemies with giant icicles. Did you know that as of 1.19, there are more than 60 different biomes in Minecraft? And on my server, you get access to the four elemental powers, the effectiveness of which is based on the environment you're in. So what would be the best biome to live in for each bending type? For example, one could argue that earthbenders should live in deserts or the mountains because it's all made of stone. But I'd opt to live underground instead because caves aren't biome specific and it's all around a safer option. Obviously, waterbender should live in the ocean or maybe on icebergs, right? A much smarter choice would actually be to live in the swamp. There's just as much water and way easier access to important materials. Firebending abilities deal more damage and have a larger area of effect during the daytime. The nether doesn't have a day and night cycle, so firebenders will always have a buff there. And finally, since airbenders are immune to fall damage, they should take advantage of that and live in the mountains or maybe the jungle where there are lots of elevated areas. There are dozens of powerful bending abilities that you can use to fight and survive on my Minecraft server. Like Earth Tunnel, an earth bending technique that lets you mine without using a pickaxe. Or Wake Fishing, a water bending move that catches fish on demand. But there are some abilities that, for whatever reason, aren't used very often and have basically been forgotten by the community. Like Metal Shred, a metal bending ability that lets you coil up metal blocks and then release them at your enemies. It's not a terrible move, you just probably won't find yourself in a room made of iron blocks very often. Or Hydrotherapy, a water bending move that lets you heal yourself or an ally using water bottles. But most players seem to prefer golden apples. There's also Lava Disc, and you might be thinking, well, that's impossible, I use Lava Disc all the time. That's because there are actually two moves named Lava Disc, one ending with a K and one ending with a C. In this case, we're talking about the one ending with a C, which is used less often because it's really just less capable than the other Lava Disc. Are you really still strip mining to find your diamonds? Come on. That's gonna take forever. On my Minecraft server, you get access to the four elemental powers. So instead, you can just tunnel with your earth bending to find those diamonds 10 times faster. Let me show you a few more ways bending can make your life a little bit easier. Still filling up your furnace with coal every time you need to smelt something? Why not save on fuel and ignite your furnaces with fire bending instead? Don't tell me you're still going to the pond to fish every day. As long as you're a water bender, you can use your wake fishing ability to catch fish on demand. And you'll also be happy to know that you've crafted your last minecart, because once you become an airbender, you'll be flying around at mock speeds. Here are some great reasons why you should not use hacks on my Minecraft server. First off, it's cheating. Not only can it get you banned, but it ruins the game for everyone else. Second, you're not gonna end up in one of those shitty YouTube videos where I trap you in a box and exploit you for views. Sorry. And third, you wouldn't even need to hack on my server anyways. You already get access to the four elemental powers. Why use x-ray packs when you could just use your earth bending to mine instead? Or use PvP exploits when you could just master the art of fire bending? And you you can go ahead and uninstall those fly hacks because you'll be flying even faster with air bending. And fourth reason, my moderators will hunt you for sport. If you've ever played Minecraft, you'd know that it's more fun when you play with friends. Not everybody has friends, and that's okay. But if you've been trying to get your friends to start playing Minecraft again, look no further. On my Minecraft server, you get access to the four elemental powers, water, earth, fire, and air. You and your friends could survive as a group, and each of you could use a different bending type so that you could maximize your benefits. Or, you could all use the same element and make your own tribe. Like, imagine, you guys could build a water bending village that's just made of igloos. Or, you could be earthbenders and build an underground base, and everybody can have their own room. The possibilities are limitless, and the best part about my server is that it's cross-compatible for Java and Bedrock, so you won't have to worry about what platforms your friends play on.
Wow, I gotta admit, I didn't think anybody would finish this video. Like, you just subjected yourself to several hours of Minecraft server promotional content. And why? You must be one hell of a chad. Also, this isn't the secret message, so if you're skipping, stop skipping. That's lame. And since you're obviously obsessed with me, go ahead and join my Discord. Anyways, happy New Year's gamers, and I'll catch you on the flip side. The side that is flipped. Yeah, that side. Yeah, that sounds good.